grandissimo. Eh, grandissimo, sì. Mm. He says this I country... I understand that much. He says it's big. Yeah, it's more than big, senor. It's magnifico. See, si? see, si magnifico. It takes a lot of courage to leave your home, come to a strange country. Don't you think you ought to teach him a little more of the language before you leave him on his own? Senor Hadi, we are Basques from the Pyrenees, and they are the best shepherds in the world. Sheep are sheep, and mountains are mountains. My brother Manuel, he knows that. In time, he will learn the language. Not from the sheep, he won't. Pero los Estados Unidos es un país de oportunidades. Todos somos iguales y hasta puede hacerse uno rico. He says America is the land of opportunity. Here, uh, every man is equal. A man can breathe. He can even grow rich. Big, all right. There's plenty of room for growing. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Senor Hardy, where do you travel for the Wells Fargo? To Dallas City. But that is where I go to. Oh, and Manuel? Manuel, he stops at Sentinel. The American Wool Company has a station there, too. I have been with them five years. It is on my word that they hire Manuel. You think a great deal of him, don't you? He is my brother. Uh, what a country, America. We travel in the same coach, you and I. You for gold, me for sheep. <laughs> what a country. The only difference being is that you've got all summer to herd your sheep. If I don't get that gold back to San Francisco in three days, I'm going to have a lot of answering to do. <laughs> Va a tomar una siesta. ¿Cómo se dice siesta? Sleep. 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 Eh, bueno. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
pregunta cómo estarás cansado. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo? ¿Tienes hambre? ¿Hambre? ¿Quieres más? ¿Quieres dormir? ¿Tienes sueño? ¿Sleep? ¿Sleep? sense of justice, ain't you, Bill? Hauling this scum back to town ain't worth the time or trouble. You'll get what's coming to him. Don't you worry none about that. We'll be happy to furnish the rope. We're taking him back to town. He's hurt that child. Ain't nobody gonna stop it hanging. So can those people out there. Standing up for a man when there's a question about his being guilty is one thing. But we caught this one dead to rights. Now you think about that, Bill. Come on, Pete. Están en error. Yo la encontré en las montañas y la quería ayudar. Y la quería ayudar. Lo juro que yo no cometí ningún crimen. No, I almost feel sorry for you. You should have taken up horse stealing. You'd have had a better chance. Se lo juro, señor. Yo no soy culpable. Soy inocente. Inocente. choosy about who you talk to, mister. What's that supposed to mean? 
I never did hold with hiring him in the first place. A man can't speak American's got to have something wrong. You can bet your life on that. And I wonder how you'd make out in Spain. Do you speak Spanish? No, I don't want to. Now, you look like a nice, clean-cut fella. Why don't you stay out of this? Why don't you leave that up to me? Where is he? Your friend's in trouble, mister. They've got him over to jail now. But he won't be there long. Who are you? Jim Hardy. I'm with Wells Fargo. We're carrying a special shipment through to San Francisco. Senor Hardy. What's he done? Plenty. You know him? Look, I'm getting tired of this runaround. If this man's broken the law, then tell me about it. Maybe we can get it straightened out. Mister, I don't know how to put a name to it. Kidnapping, maybe. A little girl. You got any proof? We caught him with the girl. La niña estaba perdida y la iba a ayudar. You savvy what he's saying? No. But I'm a pretty good judge of what's in a man's eyes. Folks around here have to go by what a man does. Regardless of what he's done, he's got a right to be hurt, and that mob out there is not about to listen. Mr. Hardy, what am I supposed to do? I've seen it before. Some bloodthirsty crackpot will stand up and buy drinks for the house. They'll talk. They'll build up their courage to hate. And they'll come breaking in here and drag that poor devil out. And he won't even be able to understand the curses when they haul him off to Hades. I'll say it again. What do you want me to do? You can start by finding somebody who can understand what he's trying to say. There ain't nobody not unless you go to Daddy City. If you talk to the little girl, she can't talk, she's still unconscious. Say, what's eating at you? He's a human being. And he's traveled halfway around the world because he believed in an idea. He believed that in this country, he'd be as good as a man next to him. He has a right to be heard under law. Which will hang him. It'll hang him if he's guilty. But not with that mob out there as the judge and the jury. I'm gonna do my best to keep that from happening. And I don't think your best is good enough. You see, you've done an awful lot of talking, and now you're gonna listen to me for a change. I helped start this town. I call every man and woman out there by the first name. They're good people. Well, they got some rights, too. And among them is the right to protect their young'uns. If they take him over my say so, he'll be dying just a little bit ahead of his time. That's what I mean when I said I don't think your best is good enough. I'll be back. Come on, Ralph. The next one's on you. Come on. And for me. Well, we got a thing or two to do ourselves. You just stick around, mister, and you're going to see a lot of fun. Well, you said one drink. I sure been nursing it. Let's get going. Never mind that. You've got to ride back to Downey City. Well, Jim, we're supposed to be at Frisco tomorrow. This is more important. Well, they are. This ain't no picnic. But when are we going to get started? I'm just giving Billy a chance to make up his mind. You ain't gonna wait for no circuit judge, are you? Well, are you? You know better than that. But when he hangs, I want Billy and his hands on that rope. What's going on in there? What are you talking about? There's a man in jail. They're gonna lynch him. I haven't got time to explain now, but I want you to ride back to Daly City. Go to the American Wool Company. There's a man that works for him named Pablo Ortiz. Bring him here. But the shipment, the home office will fry you for you. You'll have to wait. Go to the liquor stable and get your horse. Hurry. What do you think you're doing? What you'd be doing if you had the stomach for it? You ain't no deputy. You got no right. Where are you? I'm acting sheriff. Then act like one. You better get a gun down out of that rack, because I got a feeling you're going to need it. I don't need no gun. I can talk those people around. Then you better get over to the saloon and start talking. All right, I will. But, mister, even with that, if they've made up their minds, you don't stand a chance. If I were you, I wouldn't run for sheriff, Mr. Egan, because I don't think you'd make a very good one.
Manuel. Pablo. Pablo here. Huh? Gracias, Senor Hardy. Fargo. Come in. How's Andy? She's 
she's all right now. Just tired, that's all. I suppose you've heard what's going on in town. I heard. You can save that man's life. Save him? The man who stole my own child? Do you know what I went through? Have you got any idea what I went through? That mob's gonna hang him. That's murder. You don't want to be a part of that. He kept my child for a day and a night. You should have seen her when they brought her back. No, he didn't take your child. Didn't take her? They found Abby in his wagon, and you mean to tell me he didn't take her? He had her in a wagon, bringing her home when they rode down on him. I don't believe you. There isn't much time, Mrs. Turner. I can hold that crowd for a little while, but only for a while. And if it hadn't been for that man, your daughter would still be out in those hills. He saved her life, now she can save his. You mean you want me to bring her over to face him? No, to save him. She's exhausted. And if it hadn't have been for him, she'd been dead.
stretched from St. Joe, Missouri to San Francisco. Its Pony Express, Overland stage, and big freight wagons creaking and groaning under the weight of the necessities for building the frontier. The land was here, and there was opportunity aplenty, but without supply lines, it would lie fallow. Wherever a need presented itself, Wells Fargo answered the demand. It breathed the breath of life into a new land. You can't run freight lines without a change of horses. So Wells Fargo established stock stations along the Overland route. And renegade raiders poured out of the Cheyenne country. They were hitting the outlying stations hard. They had guns and ammunition. As a Wells Fargo investigator, it was my job to find out how they were getting them. Well, 
Wells Fargo handled the freight by horse and wagon. Their banking interests, consignment, and warehouses took up a block on the main street. To most people, a six-horse stagecoach meant Wells Fargo. But there's more to the company than that. It carries treasure out of every bonanza from Hudson Bay to Rio. There isn't a place on either continent where you can't cash a Wells Fargo check. It's a big outfit. Make no mistake about that. No one knew my face in St. Joe, and that was the way I wanted to keep it. <laughs> important thing to remember from this exercise is this. You notice that I turned, drew, and then fired. That way I had the whole sweep of the man's height for my target. Now then, if I'd have drew, turned, and then fired, I'd have swept across him. That narrows down my target. Now, I want you all to remember that because it might save your life someday. All right, Shorty, try it. Spin on your heel, draw, fire. Don't be embarrassed. Not many men can do this. That's why we teach it to you here. Are you powers? That's right. So you want to go to work for Wells Fargo? That's right. Came all the way from Abilene. I'll punch you. Mostly. I can ride a little. Shoot some. I like to travel. As long as I get paid for it. But we got two ways of doing things around here. The wrong way and the Wells Fargo way. What's your name? Jim. Jim Harris. Lesson number one. I call you Jim. You call me Mr. Powers. Well, I never was much of a schoolboy. Well, the course we give here separates the men from the boys. It's board and room, half pay while you're learning. I'll take it. Mr. Powers. We'll get along. Stable your horse, make yourself at home. Class starts tomorrow morning. I had to play it that way. Green, smart. As though the only thing I knew about Wells Fargo was the company name. It went against my grain, but I had to play it that way. Took you five tries, but you finally made it in just under eight minutes. Did all right, huh? Could have been better. Those two heavy barrels should be back here over the axle. Beats me what difference it makes how fast a man can load a wagon. Make all the difference if you break an axle out on the trail. With maybe a few of them shy am breathing down your neck. Powers knows what he's doing. You fellas think a good deal of him, don't you? Jack Powers was the best man Pacific Express had. When they sold out to Wells Fargo, he went with a deal. But he can still lean on a man pretty good when he wants to. But if you broke his head open, all you'd find in there is a bunch of little old Wells Fargo signs. I'd forgotten how tough that course could be. Up at the crack of dawn, then falling into bed at night. So tired you don't even hear the snores of the other men in the bunkhouse. Then beat the birds up in the morning and start all over again. Wells Fargo's not training you to kill me. But you have to learn this in order to protect your passengers, your cargo, and yourself. Now then, there are two reasons why the shotgun has proven to be the best weapon for a Wells Fargo man. Name one of them, Shorty. Oh, most men, including the old hoot owl, have got an idea what they're going to look like when they're dead. Kind of peaceful, nice. Only there ain't nothing nice about being torn in half by a shotgun. That's right. Works on the mind. What's the other one, Jim? Shotgun covers a wide range. Therefore, speed and dexterity are more important than careful aim. You've been paying more attention than I thought. Well, suppose you show us. Just lope your horse by here. That bale of hay there is a man with the beat on you. When I say now, turn and fire.
men. Couldn't have done better myself. That's all for today, men. I uh, want to talk to you, Jim. How am I doing, teacher? For a while there, I didn't think you were going to work out. Now there's no doubt in my mind you're head and shoulders above anyone in this group. You'll do. Thanks, Mr. Bowers. I spent the next couple of days and nights keeping my ears open, hoping for a lead. And then it happened. No drinking tonight, men. We're taking Wagons West tomorrow morning. We are. That's right. I'm tired of training men and losing them on their first assignment. I'm taking this run through myself. <laughs> no more half things. Yeah. Here I come. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Jim? This is what you were trained for. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> before we left St. Joe. You saw me do it. Could have missed something. The only thing I've missed is a little sleep. Now, you better get back in that bedroll before I miss any more. All right. Mr. Powers, I was just doing what you told us to do, to keep our eyes open, pay attention, remember? That'll be two of us with our eyes open. You remember that.
We'll pick up fresh horses here and then push on to Laramie. Do you think you ought to give these men a rest? You've been pushing them pretty hard. You just take orders, Harry. Yes, sir. He must be new, eh? Yeah, he's fresh as paint. But he'll learn. He sure will. All right, let's get these teams unhitched. Look alive. Got to move in. Fresh horses here. What about the Cheyenne? Oh, small band. 10, 15, maybe. That's enough. You find out anything? I don't know. I've got an idea. What's holding you up down here? We're all set. Indian signs between here and Laramie. Indians don't worry me. Let's get some of these horses up there to those wagons. All right. Let them roll.
Mitchell's. No. What do you mean, no? I'm not here in the morning. We'll never catch up to Bowers. He's planning on raiding the wagon train. And I'm planning on waiting right here. You want to get killed? You listen to me. Get back down there and warn Shorty and the others. Be ready when an attack comes. That's an order. Well, I ain't taking it. Cut these halfway through. Cut them, man. Cut them. He's kind of light-skinned. But I don't think those wagon drivers will notice. You're going to make a real sure enough Cheyenne. Beginning to get the idea? If you're waiting for me to break, Powers, you're going to be here a long time. <laughs> You'll break. When those greenhorn drivers start pumping lead into you, you see, you're going to be leading the war party for way out in front.
sailing ships still plied the seven seas, and many of them carried express for Wells Fargo. Ships from New York bound for Mexico sometimes anchored off Matamoras, a port at the mouth of the Rio Grande. The Wells Fargo Company maintained a branch office here at Matamoras, and back in the 1870s, this was not always an easy office to maintain. Lillian, I'll ask you just once more. Must you? Don't you know the answer? I was still hoping you'd change your mind. I'll wait out here while you conduct your other business. this morning. 
you look inside, Mrs. Barkley, you can see a part of the prison. Listos? Miren. Fuego! Why did you bring me here? I'm trying to talk you out of going. Sebastian? 
No. I'm new down here. So was I until he stole my poke, left me like this. Well, I'll see if I can break you out of those chains. And I think you'd maybe better take my boat going back to Matamoros. Go back? What for? Come on. Get at those chains. Get the sledgehammer.
not. Load that rifle. Gary, get the pistol. There's no sign of that boat. We've still got a long way to go. You think you can manage your survey equipment all right? Well, I'd rather have a mule, but uh, I'll try. Uh, Garrett here can help you. And carry the camp equipment. You don't have to carry four canteens of water. And that hat box. If you still want your hat. What will you do? I'll have my hands full. I've got a lot of money there. Mind if I ask how much? I never counted. It was mine. I counted there. It was mine. I'd count it, too. Whose money is it? Belongs to a long, white, bearded uncle of mine. Uncle Sam? You guessed it. <laughs> You'd better get some sleep. We're gonna have to get started early in the morning. That goes for you, too. And those days on the trail, they weren't days. They seemed more like weeks. We never marched through the noonday sun. We rested at the side of the trail. These chains. I know they hurt, but we can't get them off if we get a file. Maybe I don't want them off. Maybe I like them. I may meet up with Sebastian again. And when I do, I'll... Save your strength. You got a long way to go. We'd seen no more bandits since we left the river. No sign of the revolution since Madame Morris. But bandits and revolution were somewhere around us. And we still had at least 20 miles ahead of us. Indian, 
Marina. Two horses there, all I could steal. Sebastian is coming. Sebastian do this? Please, senor, let us hurry. Sebastian, find out what you carry in that box. We meet a rebel from Montemoros. Sebastian, tell him about your postcard. Now he is angry because he was stupid. He wants that money. How many has he got with him? Pedro and two others. God, you got two horses and two women. Hurry up and get out of here. Never mind that. What about you? I can hold off an army from here. Sebastian's no army. What do I do, walk? You're going to stay with me. Hurry up, Dunn. I still don't like the idea of leaving you here. Now you wanted to fight Sebastian. Now this is your chance. Keep that rifle aimed the right way, because I'll be right behind you with this. Hurry up, move! Yeah. 